Welcome to this discussion on counting problems. You would have all seen problems involving permutations and combinations in aptitude test papers. They are all essentially counting problems. Before we get into the nitty gritties of permutations and combinations, let us spend some time to understand the very fundamental and basic of all these counting problems. I have drawn some X's on the board. Can you tell me how many X's are there? You would all give me the answer 19. Now let us focus our attention on how you did this problem. You would have observed that there are 4 rows and 5 columns. So 4 into 5, 20. But there is one X missing here. So 20 minus 1, 19. Right? Now if I ask the same question to a child who is in the first standard, she will also give me the same answer. But she does not know multiplication or subtraction. She will use a different method altogether. She will count 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. up to 90. Now both these methods are absolutely correct. You being a person who understood multiplication and subtraction could get to the answer a little more quickly. Similarly, all counting problems can be done in multiple methods. One using a mathematical approach, another using enumeration. Our attempt here is to look at a few typical counting problems of those kind and to enhance our capability in doing those problems in aptitude test papers, especially those coming in GRE, GMAT, CAD and campus recruitment test papers. Now if you look at the typical problems that come in aptitude test papers from this category, we will have typically two types of problems, one in which the order is important which we call permutation and another in which the order is not important which we call combinations. Now there are certain nuances in all these problems that you need to take care of. In some, the, some of these problems you will have situations where repetition is allowed, in some repetition will not be allowed, in some of these problems all the elements involved will be all different, they will be unique, in some of these problems you will have repetition of the same elements. In some of these problems, you will have identical elements. In some of these problems, the arrangement could be linear. In some, the arrangement could be around a circle. All these problems, whether it is permutation or combination or anything else, is based on two basic principles of counting. The two basic principles of counting are multiplication principle and addition principle. Let us first understand what it is. Let us say, in the evening you felt really hungry and you wanted to have a drink and a snack. You go to the nearby cafeteria. In the cafeteria, the options available for drinks are tea, coffee and lime. For snacks, let us say you have burger, cutlet, puffs, and samosa. As I said, you wanted to have a drink and a snack. Let us see in how many different ways you can have a drink and a snack. You could have tea and burger, one possibility, tea and cutlet, tea and puffs, tea and samosa, coffee burger, five, coffee cutlet, six, coffee puffs, seven, coffee samosa, 8, lime and burger, 9, lime and cutlet, 10, 11, and lime and samosa, 12. Total number of possibilities are 12. Now we looked at each of each one of them, we basically listed them down, we used the enumeration approach here. Instead, if you look at this mathematically, this thing can be done in three ways, that is, the number of ways in which you can have a drink is 3. And this thing can be done in four ways. The number of ways in which you can have a snack is four. 
you wanted to have a drink and a snack. However you have the drink, you can have the snack in four ways. However you have the snack, you can have the drink in three ways. So both of them together can be had in three into four or twelve ways. This is what we call multiplication principle of counting. That is, if a certain thing can be done in m ways and another thing can be done in n ways, then the number of ways in which both of them can be done will be m into n. Now let me change the situation slightly. Let's say you go to this canteen. In this cafeteria, these things are available. But the problem is, you went to this cafeteria alone. None of your friends are along with you. At the canteen, each one of these cost 10 rupees. Unfortunately, you have only 10 rupees with you. And the cafeteria guy does not give you credit. So even though the situation, even though you wanted both a drink and a snack, the situation does not allow that. You can have either a drink or a snack. Let us see in how many different ways you can have it. You could either have a tea or a coffee or a lime or a burger or a cutlet or a puffs or a sounds. Total number of possibilities will be 7. If you look at this mathematically, the first thing that is having a drink can be had in 3 ways. The second thing can be done in 4 ways. So total number of ways of doing this or that, you can't do both, you can either do this or the other one. So the total number of ways will be 3 plus 4 which is 7. This is called addition principle of counting. Get it in another way, if you can do a certain thing in m ways and if you can do another thing in n ways, then this or that can be done in m plus n ways.